Hello and welcome to this episode of Up Your Vibe and this is a very exciting episode for me because it's something that's going to take me well out of my comfort zone because I have very little knowledge of this product and we're going to be talking about the batch flower remedies and how healing from your feelings can change your life. So how would you feel if you had something that you could rely on on times when you were feeling uncomfortable with a situation maybe in your personal life or in your professional life? You know, those sort of things that you're not able to deal with, that you're uncomfortable with. Um, nagging work colleagues that irritate you or partners that you find difficult to deal with. Or how about the grumpy babies? or the children going to school and, and what anxieties they will be having and grumpy teenagers. Let's say less about grumpy teenagers, but there is something here that can help you. And one of the main things I think that I've become aware of recently is the difficulties that carers are having when they're caring for people, uh, maybe with learning difficulties or learning disabilities. Maybe they've got somebody who's got a physical illness, or maybe it's just people that are elderly. And let's face it, it all comes to us. And do we think about those people in these responsibilities that have carer stress? So today's episode is particularly interesting to me because number one, it's taking me out of comfort zone, but I know that I am going to get great knowledge from today's show from the wonderful um, Rose Todd. So I would really love you all to welcome Rose and to listen because her wealth is absolutely phenomenal. So Rose, please tell me, what got you onto this path what is your passion about these batch remedies oh <clears throat> oh sorry about that well hello to you um Paula, and hello to your listeners and your audience too you're um, very welcome batch flower remedies it was a long time ago as in 1981 or two my darling daughter was seven and she had a bad cough. She was ill. And I mean she was ill. She wasn't sick. She was ill. And she coughed and coughed and coughed till she vomited. And she'd been like that for weeks. And it got so bad that she stopped eating. Because if you eat, you cough, you vomit. Um, so she's basically stopped eating. And she was getting really frail. And she was taking four drugs every four hours. And she'd been doing it for over 10 days and nothing had shifted. Now, I had always been a great believer that there's always a way out of a crisis. And yet I just couldn't see a way out of this crisis. I really couldn't. And so my mum was visiting at the time. And after a very particularly bad bout of coughing, where my daughter's frail body was wrecked. And she just, after she vomited, she just sort of collapsed in exhaustion. And I went back to say to my mother, there has to be another way. There is always another way. And there has to be another way. Now, at that, as I said that, I turned on the radio. That's something I never do, is turn on the radio in the afternoon. And I turned on the radio and there was an interview with a homeopath. No idea what a homeopath was didn't know I created my own reality, didn't know anything. And so here literally was instant manifestation. There was the homeopath. So I took her to a homeopath and he said, give me 18 months and I'll make her well. And he did, but it was 18 months worth of care, careful adjusting of remedies and so on. But he gave her one batch flower remedy and I watched in awe and wonder as her character changed over those three days and how she just blossomed and how she became stronger in herself. And I was hooked, I really was. So when I was all irritable and grumpy because the children wouldn't do what I said, why is it children won't hurry up? I just don't know. Anyway, I was grumpy because they wouldn't hurry up. 
and somebody said to me, you need to take Impatiens. So I got some Impatiens and two drops on my tongue and I felt the tension just all seep out of me. And if I'd have been in any doubt before, I was in no doubt now. And I needed to know more. And that's how it all began. That sounds just phenomenal. You know, why haven't I heard about this? I know. I do not know why the world doesn't use them more. It is incredible. Really yeah, I've, I've looked at some of your blogs and it's fascinating. Uh, the effect that these remedies have mm. on the individual. Mm. But what is batch flower? What, what batch flower? What does it do for people? Well, um, to start with, the batch flower remedies were <coughs> developed by uh, a doctor called Edward Batch. I'll come back to his story in a minute. What do they do? They are, there are 38 remedies and they are a complete system of healing. Um, there is, they deal with the negative emotions. They, they heal and soothe negative emotions. Um, they are a vibrational form of healing. So there's no substance involved. It's only energy healing. And therefore, they just retune your, your energy. It's like retuning a radio. If you're cross and grumpy, and when you take impatience, it's, you're flooded with a higher energy and it, that retunes you and puts you back in alignment with your soul. And that is where the pure energy flows through. And so I've thrown in something else there that really it's out of, out of sequence. But I'll come back to the soul. So let me look at Edward Batch and why he, he developed this system. The Batch Flower Remedy System is, is a complete healing system. And it heals emotions. It doesn't deal with mental stuff. Well, it does really, but it's mo emotions, negative emotions, and it deals with um, how you feel, because we feel all the time. And the, 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 the remedies heal and soothe negative emotions. Now, uh, Dr. Batch um, had a practice in Harley Street, and he noticed that his drugs were not bringing about a healing as he expected them to. He also noticed from observation of his patients that no matter what was the matter, everybody would always react the same way. So when you have a set of circumstances in life, you are going to react one particular way. And he, so he found that they were what he calls the 12 healers. That's what he found first. Now this is a personality type. So this is how, if you know that you are this type of person, you will always, always react that way to everything in life. You'll get other emotions coming too, but you will always react the same way in life. Um, so he then wanted to find out if he, he went looking for a simple method of healing whereby he could give this method of healing to the, his patients and bring about a complete healing. Mm -hmm. And he did, and it did. So he then needed, to, when they got to the stage where sometimes the remedies wouldn't bring about a complete healing, so he had to go back and look for more. Um, and then there was a certain set of circumstances where he had to go back and look for more. So there are 38 remedies. These remedies are made from mostly from English wild flowers. They grow in the hedgerows, they grow in the fields, they grow everywhere. They're, they're from trees. Um, but they're mostly English wildflowers. And when people say to me, oh, the remedies are made in um, South America or wherever it is, no, they're not, because they can't be, because they're English wildflowers. Um, so it's, as I say, there are 38 of them. They cover every single human emotion that we have. I just have to give Dr. Batch absolute credit for being able to think outside the box and, yes. and not uh, fully rely on the pharmaceutical um, industry. So I just give him absolute credit for that. And when you talked about the 12 types that he identified, is that personality or is it attitude? It's a bit like the signs of the Zodiac. Everybody belongs to one of the signs of the Zodiac. And 
therefore everybody will belong to one of the what he called a soul type of um, of rem the remedies so everyone will belong to a soul type of rem soul remedy mm -hmm. I have several Facebook groups and in one of the Facebook groups somebody wrote and said I have changed type and I wrote back and said it's not possible you cannot change your type this is your personality this <clears throat> Dr. Batch was a, an extremely religious man but again he was thinking outside of the box he talks in his writings about a brotherhood now the brotherhood I'm not sure what the brotherhood is whether it's a loose term about how he you know how he referred to his friends or whether it is literally a brotherhood he was living in Oxfordshire at the time and down in Hampshire now there is uh, an organization called the White Brotherhood now whether he was referring to that or not I, there was no I haven't found anything in his writings mm -hmm. but he um, was was very religious and his whole concept was God gave us everything we need God gave us the air to breathe the earth to live off the water to use and the, the sun to, for us to, to, to have the warmth for growth Absolutely. And if God had given us everything that we need to live, then God must have also provided for our when when we became ill. So literally, He started to look at what He calls the healing herbs, yes. and uh, of the earth, and that's where He started to look. Now He had cancer, um, and was given three months to live. That probably pushed him into it more than anything else. Mm -hmm. He was a sickly child. Um, and he grew up wanting to be a doctor. And, um, but more than wanting to be a doctor, he, uh, he wanted to find the cause of disease. Now, this is no small beer, as they say. No. You know, I think I'll just sit down on Wednesday afternoon and find the cause of disease. <laughs> but he did find the cause of disease from his observations of his own patients. And what would he say the cause of all dis-ease is? Because I say dis-ease because obviously yes, it is dis -ease. Dis -ease in the body. It all comes from our emotions. Exactly. I am so, I, I, I'm just absolutely amazed that I have never heard of this before. <gasn't> it's a whole world. And it is, it is. And I'm so really excited just listening to you talk. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go back to one of the questions that you've um, talked about. And that mm. is uh, that batch flour is natural and it's simple. Yep. And it's an extremely powerful healer. So how could one integrate that into their everyday life um very easily very very easily edward batch his intention was that every household have a set of the remedies and that they would be used every day because what happens when we meet life we we react to life and that causes a feeling I know there's belief systems behind that and so on, which if we had time or over a cup of coffee and a glass of wine, we could discuss. But for now, it, it basically is just the feeling. I'm anxious to go to school, take this remedy. And, you know, I don't want to face today. He has seriously made me angry. I'm going to take that remedy yes. and so on. So you, you would take them day, day by day by day. Are they addictive? No, they're not. They're balancing. They, they put you back in harmony with your soul. Those 12 types that I was talking about, mm -hmm. they have 12 soul energies. Every, they have within them the essence of what your soul came here to achieve, what it came here to experience. Mm -hmm. And when you are walking that path of the soul, then you feel that experience and then you flow. That's when you're in line and that's when you flow. That was the, the thing also that hooked me was when I opened the book and I read, if you walk the path of your soul, you are happy and healthy. If you deviate from the path of your soul, you are unhappy and become sick. Notice happy first, healthy second. So if someone was feeling like, uh, life happens to me and not for me uh, having that feeling that it's unfair which remedy would they choose for that emotion right so um, if they believe that life is treating unfair them, them unfairly they will be they you would become bitter and resentful 
because yeah. that's the process of it. Yes. And that the willow that you would take, uh, sorry, the remedy you would take for that is the remedy called willow. Mm -hmm. And it's brilliant. I would think half the women who are married over 50 need it because people who were, were married at that time, that was what marriage was. You mm -hmm. give up yourself, you bake apple pies, and you put your slippers by the floor, on the, you know, by the fire. And that's what you do. Yeah. Or perhaps not. Well, not, not now but that may be no. what you did oh yeah you but know. but i mean in the 50s or 60s yes yeah yeah that's it so if somebody was feeling depressed because of trauma and events could you suggest a, a remedy for that one right um there are 38 remedies for or every different feeling so first of all let's go to a consideration of what a, a, a an emotion is we can have an emotion called grief. We can have an emotion to call depression. So let's deal with grief. In yeah. grief, you can have that. It's like an egg. And you can have loads of different feelings within that, that, that uh, emotion of grief. You can be sad. You can feel guilty. I didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. And you can be angry. My aunt, when her husband died, she stamped her feet like a three-year-old, hands on hip and scream to the sky how dare you leave me yeah she was angry yes so all those feelings are in grief yes now if you imagine yin, yin and yang they are that the line between them is a curvy line it flows and let's put feelings and thoughts now thoughts and feelings go together you cannot have one without the other you sometimes have a thought and you don't recognize the feeling and you'll have a feeling and you can't identify the thought, mm -hmm. but they always go together. So in your, your egg that you have called depression, there will probably be as many as 10 different feelings and 10 different thought patterns. Yeah. So somebody comes with the depression. Why are they depressed? What feelings are behind, what thought pattern is behind it? The thought pattern behind it is, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I have no self-confidence. The depth of despair that comes about from years of lack of confidence is um, just incredible. You wouldn't give that much credit to, I've got no confidence to how much despair that there is in it, in lack of confidence. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of January, in my two Facebook groups, Batch Flower groups, I did what I called the LARCH challenge. The re remedy for self-confidence is LARCH. Now, under normal circumstances, I can give somebody a remedy and within three days I expect to see some sort of movement. So I said to them, who's up for this challenge? Take, don't take any other remedies, just take Larch for seven days. And then the replies started to come in, the posts come in. This is incredible, I didn't realize this. I have been anxious all my life. I have taken every anxiety remedy, nothing has done it. I am taking Larch for self-confidence. I don't need any anxiety remedies. That's amazing. So on and so forth. That is such a just testament as well to the product, isn't it? Yeah. So it depends on what is the thought pattern behind the feelings. Why are they depressed? What's going on? A lot of depression comes from suppressed anger. Because you think about it, depressed, suppressed, repressed. And what, what, are, what emotion are we not really allowed to feel? Particularly the British. We're... Um, we suppress our anger and we suppress our feelings. Yeah, we have to give that stiff upper lip, don't we? And not, not let the world know really how we are feeling because mm. it could be ugly. Mm. We're not allowed to convey this ugliness that we have inside. And we do all have it, unfortunately. And if we repress it, then it comes out in other ways which can affect the body. You know, as neuroscience now tells us, the, the mind-body connection is, is indisputable. Yeah, it's everything. Your, your mind has built your body. Exactly. I just wish my mind had built my body a size 10. <laughs> well, if that's what you wish, the law of attraction can make it so. I'm doing it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> but 
are these products a bit like essential oils? Do they no. ingest them? No, yes. Ah, no. okay. Right, they are not essential oils. Okay. Um, an essential oil, now I, I know very little about aromatherapy, so if anybody does, and I'm sorry if I get this wrong, but I'm doing the best I can. Ar uh, aromatherapy, if, let's take lavender. Mm -hmm. Lavender is, they take the lavender flowers, I assume the flowers, and they crush them until the oil comes out. Okay. And then I believe that oil is used externally. It's for massage. You put it on pillows to sleep. You put it in burners and so on. You, you right. can ingest it as well. Can you? Yeah. Well, there you go. This is a, this is a glass of uh, water with lemon drops, with lemon in at the moment that I'm drinking. You mean but from a squeezed lemon? No, no, it's essential oils. It, it's an uh, aromatherapy oil. Yes, yeah, an aromatherapy oil. Okay. Yeah. That I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, the batch flower remedies are made in a very particular way. He, you get a glass, a bowl of water, natural spring water, um, and you pick the flowers that you're going to use and lay the flowers across the surface of the water. Then you put the bowl by the plant in the sunshine for four hours. The sun transfers the energy from the flower into the water. So now that water is the essence, but water goes off. And so therefore they're preserved in brandy. <clears throat> so they smell and taste like Christmas pudding. Wow. <coughs> Sorry. So is this, um, cause I know that you have, um, an, a, a book, a little book that people can, um, come to you for with the remedies in a prescriber book yes so does that mean that you make your own batch remedies or do you buy them right you can make your own batch flower remedies but finding the same species is going to be tricky and the I, sun shine every day and the sun doesn't shine every day <laughs> <laughs> um so um and quite honestly as they say life's too short to stuff mushrooms Life's too short to make my own remedies when I have complete faith in the man who makes the remedies that I purchase. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I, I, w I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't and even when bother. you said it's preserved in brandy, yes. Um, is that okay to give to babies, to young children, to school aged children? Um, is it suitable for absolutely everybody? Yes, it is. You take the remedies. You can use them on the skin, um, but they are, you take them. Yeah. Um, there are three or four different ways that you can take them. You can take them straight on the tongue, which then you just will really taste the brandy. So just a couple of drops on the tongue. Two drops on your tongue. Okay. And, and um, or what I always do, as you've got your, I put mine in my water, two drops in the glass of water. Mm -hmm. because they are made the essence is water so it's almost like you're putting it back into its natural habitat you know mm -hmm. you're putting it back in there and in water or you can make i should have brought these things out make a little brown bottle and you uh put that so much water in put the drops in and then you from that little brown bottle you use it into your water every day you do that if you were taking it over a long period because you're dealing with deep-seated beliefs okay Mm. And, and are there any potential side effects of taking these products that you know of? Um, no, because they're vibrational. If you take a remedy and it doesn't um, match your vibration, just go straight past. And because you, it's, you, the that rare vibrations are get a, addicted to using any of them. No, 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 no. no, no. Because People say to me, how, how long do I take these for? And I say, until you forget. Oh, because once you've forgotten, that. you're no longer focused on it. So I know you, there is a rescue, uh, a rescue remedy. When would you take the rescue remedy? When you uh, rescue remedy is the most re renowned of all the remedies. And it's probably where most people start. Um, and when in doubt, everybody reaches for rescue remedy. But it is not a panacea for all ills. It really isn't. Um, it's made up of five remedies, um, and it, it's amazing. It really is. It just rescues. 
I, when I was living in Dubai, there was a knock on the door um, at about half past nine at night. And the 15 year old girl from next door said her mum was unconscious, would I come? So I picked up my bag and went next door. Um, she said she called the ambulance. So I, as I walked into the lounge, there was mum slumped in a chair. Beside her were three waste paper baskets filled with bright red blood because she'd had a bloody nose. And it was profuse, you know, she couldn't stop it bleeding. Um, but the mother was unconscious. The maid was hysterical, God love her. She was hysterical. The child was sobbing. Who did I give rescue remedy to first? The maid? The maid, yes, the maid. Because <laughs> she, then she could assist. If she... Oh, she was in a poor way. So yeah. she had some rescue remedy and literally within 10, 10 seconds, she had calmed down and the daughter too. And then I phoned the gatehouse and said to the gatehouse, the guard at the gatehouse, there is an ambulance coming through. Please show him to villa number 47 because I need to know when he's on his way. When I heard the ambulance come, as I heard them open the doors and begin to get the trolley out, I put two drops of rescue remedy on her, her, the mother's lips. Immediately she came round and as soon as she came round, her nose started to bleed again. But by that time, the medics were in and the medics just came straight in and did what they needed to do to stop the blood, uh, stop the nose bleed and put her on the, the, the trolley and took her into hospital. Gosh. But that's how quick it works. That's Honestly. an amazing example of, of how powerful this is. And I know one of the questions that I wanted to talk to you about is, yes, from a healing point of view, I can see there is massive, massive value for anybody. But what if someone wanted to use batch flower to their path of self-knowledge and personal growth? How could it help them in these circumstances? I can honestly say along with a spiritual teaching, but I can honestly say that the batch flower remedies were my path to spiritual growth and self-knowledge. So um, when I took impatience, like I told you, when I took impatience, the irritability just sort of drained out of me. Mm -hmm. So I thought, this is magic. Yeah. I can give it to my husband. Mm -hmm. So I gave him impatience. And do you know what happened? Very little. And I thought, how come it didn't work? I know it works. I saw my daughter. I, I experienced it. I know it works. Why didn't his work? So obviously, it was the wrong remedy. Yes. So I then had to go into a book and find out which was the right remedy. And so then I gave him impatience because he was being irritable and grumpy. And I gave him beach because he was intolerant and critical and criticized um, the habits of others, always criticizing others. <clears throat> it was never his fault. It was always the others. So I gave him those two together. Magic. Wow. He was back to the man I fell in love with and was married instead of being the grumpy old sod I was living with. Oh, that is so wonderful. To I know, I know. So every time he went into one of his myths and he got really angry, I would just give him the remedies in his tea. Now, mm. you might say, is that unethical? Yes, it's hugely unethical to give somebody something without them knowing it. But I married him for better or worse, so I worked out that um, I don't like him when he's worse, so I'm going to make him better. So it's logical. So it was within the vows of my, my vows, my wedding vows, as it were. And um, it made a huge difference. A huge Is he aware of this? He was, uh, uh, you know, after a while. He was after a while. Okay, and, and then he, he was okay with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're still married? He did grump at me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and you are still married? No. <laughs> I, 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 I admitted defeat. <laughs> one, one of the things that I am really concerned about is 
in today's society is the lack of creativity that people seem to have because there's all this gloom and doom around them and all this control by fear with the manipulation on the TV and what we hear around us. And, you know, recently I heard about this, a game that tells young teenagers to do things. So why is it we have this lack of creation and is there something that batch flower remedies can give us to increase our creative selves because we all have it mm. it's, it's our soul our soul is our creation and imagination is the language of the soul as is emotions is the language of the soul mm -hmm. our soul talks to us through our feelings our soul talks to us through our dreams on our and our imagination yes um not quite the answer that you want you want but i might come to that um, in the early 80s I found a, I had been, I'd left the church because it no longer added up for me. And I had been searching for um, the truth. It was a mm. bit like Edward Batch, searching for the cause of disease. It's a needle in a haystack. Yeah. So I was searching for the truth and I came across some spiritual teachings. It, they were channeled teachings. They were channeled by a man in, in the States. And the material is called the Lazarus material. And the Lazarus, Lazarus's teachings were my, um, were my salvation, just as the Betcha Flower Remedies were. Mm -hmm. So I was working with this spiritual work at the same time as I was unraveling who I was. You don't sit down and think, I'm going to do spiritual growth today. You think, I don't like how I feel. And if I don't like how I feel and I'm blaming the outside world too much and I'm bitter and resentful about it and I take willow, that's actually healing that part of the belief system. Oh, I'm so excited listening to this. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So in the process of just healing what you're feeling today, yeah. whether you know you create your own reality or not, if you feel better, life is good. Mm. And if you feel better, then you know that you are creating a better future to bring into the present. So with all this that went on, this was my process. And every single time that I found a remedy for me, I learned about me. Yes. Why, was I, why was I irritable? I was irritable because everybody was going too slowly. Was everybody going too slowly? No. I was going too fast, or I needed to have patience and forgiveness to those that are slower than I. Yeah. Okay. If I was intolerant and critical, then it was because I had if 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 I if I make you wrong, what does that make me? Right. If you're wrong, I'm right. Yes. Yeah. And why should I have to make me right? You know, my husband came back home one day and he says, I can't stand Paul any longer. He spends the whole, the whole time telling me how good, she, good he is. And I said, why does he need to do that? He said, well, I don't know. And I said, yes, you do. He needs to tell you how good he is because if he didn't tell you, you wouldn't know mm. because he doesn't feel so good. And, and so beach is all about self-worth. It's, yeah, it's about ego as well, isn't it? Having to be better than everybody else. And it, so it was with going through all the process of learning with each remedy and how it related to me and how the, the remedy was developing the virtues within me, that was my personal growth. Now, in the seminars that Lazarus used to hold, hold 400 odd people in a ballroom, and he would have, the, the Lazarus would have question time, and one man asked Lazarus, um, this question he said this is all very well Lazarus you know we're all putting in uh, we're all doing the meditation we're all changing the world we're changing our lives you know this is all well and good but how is it going to help the world how is it going to change the people who are starving in Africa how is it going to stop the wars in the Middle East how is it going to work mm -hmm. and Lazarus said very simply it's going to change it, it works because on the homeopathic effect of a little changes the whole. Okay. Now we go back. So the Mayan calendar, I'm off, off piste here. Can I go off piste? Yes. 
Yeah. The Mayan calendar stopped at 2012 and they didn't know, nobody knows why it stopped at 2012. The seers couldn't see beyond 2012. So with, I've done a talk, um, it's on YouTube, it's called The Bigger Picture. 2000, um, 1994, um, a major astrological event happened and there was a huge downloading of energy that happened. We were facing a, a choice. Mankind faced a choice. And the choice was either we, um, we, live, we continue to live the nightmare, which means we are already living the nightmare, or we're going to live a life of mediocrity. Who wants to live a life of mediocrity? Do you? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> or we live the dream. Yeah. And enough of us chose the dream and that we are healing the world because we are a little that's affecting the whole. Mm -hmm. Hence, yes, I, I absolutely um, stand by that myself as well because more and more people are becoming more aware. Absolutely. And we are, we are connected. So if, if somebody the other side of the world is suffering, that affects us too. Absolutely. The butterfly effect, it's a well-known theory and it, 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 it is proven. So the, the people who are inventing these games, that is their creativity coming through. Mm -hmm. It just may not suit us at the moment, but it's their creativity. They're going through their path. They're going through their evolution as everybody is. And because like attracts like, the people who are on that wavelength they're going to be drawn to them is there a remedy to increase creativity no because they only deal with negative emotions so how does that person feel and yeah. they take that remedy that person feels great he doesn't need a remedy sorry that was a very long way around answering the simple it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't it wasn't a long way around well and if it was it was very interesting um but i still feel that people instead of um being creative and doing what they're well able to they're they're more led by other things like this game that's telling children to commit suicide and they're actually doing it you know, know. why is that teenager not able to say no okay let's look at that so the teenager may have um no self-confidence she may be open to the influence of others well they obviously are being influenced by other people now the remedy for being open to influence from being influenced by others is walnut it walnut is the the link breaker mm -hmm. it will break an influence of you influencing me me influencing that one and so on it'll mean that i can sit there and i can watch that video and think rubbish but more importantly by breaking that influence and perhaps taking larch at the same time, it means I am now content, I am on a higher vibration, and I won't even be drawn to watching that video. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? I, I do, and that sounds marvellous. It's about um, getting that teenage child or the younger child to understand that this is, this is going to be a benefit to them. But ultimately, that child or that adult is taking the journey that they were supposed to take anyway. Absolutely. But um, I do have, um, I'm just leaving the, for a minute. I'm not going anywhere. Um, I've had mums come and they're very worried about their teenagers and they don't, um, the, te they, the teenagers won't talk to them. And I said to one mum, your teenager doesn't talk to you because they don't know what they're feeling. They can't identify it. Their hormones are raging and they can't sit there and think, I have a weaker self-image or anything else. It's just everybody else is making me mad, you know, and so on and so forth. So this is what um, you were talking about earlier, about the guides that I, we were talking about. Yeah. I give the mum this guide and say to her, um, give this to your children, don't nag them to death, and they will come out and they will tell, tell you, I think I would like these. Come back and I'll make them up for you. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. So that it's is one not, way. It's not like you're forcing it on them. You're just no. making them no. aware that there's yeah. another way. 
Yeah. Or just buy them a bottle of rescue remedy and huh. say, put four drops in your drinks. Yes. Yes. And, there's, a, and there's a remedy for everything. There really is. And you make this book freely available for anyone who wants yeah. to go yeah. onto your website. Mm. Uh, and all you charge is the postage. That's it. So they can get the two books from you absolutely free. Well, one, one, one small ebook you can download. Okay. Uh, but I will send this and another printed off guide. Yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Do so anybody can become more aware and, yes. and start to help themselves and their family with these remedies. Absolutely. That's what Bat wanted. He yeah. wanted um, the remedies in the kitchen so that everybody would, um, they were a self-help thing. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it wasn't supposed to um, be something that was going to be made but controlled by statutory regulations or these sort of things it's not yeah. actually there's no there's no um legal restrictions on that flower remedies um but it was an everyday process of how do i feel do i like how i don't feel no i don't i'm going to take the remedy and i'm gonna feel fine and and are batch flower remedies available all around the world they are they are. There are there are several companies that make them. Um, there is one major company that is in England, particularly. You'll find that this company's remedies everywhere. There are two other very good companies, and their remedies are in smaller independent health shops, and you can buy them online. I get mine online, and I order from a very particular um, company because I like the, man, the integrity and the intention of the man who makes them, and I like the ethos of his company. Mm -hmm. So I, I buy his remedies, and I find them really good. Um, but yes, you can order them online. There are various companies. That so if them. someone wanted to become more um, interested in this subject, they wanted to learn more, how would they do that? Oh, I'd love to learn more. <laughs> Have I got time to tell you a story? Please. Okay. When we got to England in 1987, uh, I'd lived in Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. So there was no books. There was very few remedies. It was literally like a, a mole going through the darkness while I was trying to find out more about the remedies. Um, and we got to England. And I, as soon as I could, I bought a book. And when I say as soon as I could, <clears throat> we came to live in England with 128 pounds in our pockets. Ooh. And we started from that. So um, there wasn't... Um, there wasn't sort of much money except for a bottle of rescue remedy every now and again and the book and I wanted to know more I desperately needed to know more I needed to understand this was feeding my soul and I wanted to understand anyway we came to the time that I found the batch center were giving courses so I said to, to my husband please can I go please can I go we haven't got money for courses Please can I go? I need this. I need to go. Anyway, eventually, after much cajoling and um, sort of batting my eyelids, etc., he said, okay, I could go. But then the company he worked for went down and he lost his job. So we were three months without work. Then he got a job in Hong Kong. And so literally everything back in, in, in packing cases, picks up my children, pick up my cats and go to Hong Kong. But the course was in London oh. and he promised me. So I flew from Hong Kong to London with car hire and everything else for a 25 pound course. Gosh. How about that? That is, that is <laughs> your determination. I was. I was. Your determination. Yeah. And also by then I knew I created my own reality. And now you actually do courses yourself, don't you? I do my, I do my courses. That's why... Um, I hate to be like this, but there are some courses that are not teaching about the batch flower of remedies very effectively, I feel. Okay. I can't qualify that by I feel. Um, and so I decided to do it myself. So I do, I have a batch flower school now and I have two courses, one a foundation course and one is an accredited diploma course. So you can go through both of them and you can become an accredited batch flower practitioner. Mm -hmm. And because the thing that I lacked so much, Paula, right at the beginning, was somebody to talk to, somebody to share my enthusiasm with. And somebody, now you're sharing it with the world. I know, I know, it's lovely. And I needed somebody to say, not that remedy, this one. 
And then you think, why this one? And so I'd look at it and I think, that's why, that's why. And so that's why I have um, the Facebook groups and um, um, I Are your was course bought. online? Pardon? Are your courses, courses are online. Oh, so anybody throughout the world yeah. can take them then? Yeah. If I had enough people locally, I would do workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. There um, is like, on YouTube. Sorry, off you go. And like you were saying, uh, there are also um, Facebook groups that people can sign up to. Is that uh, people that have actually joined your courses or the general public can join? There is two groups. One is called Batch Flowers with Rose Todd. Yeah. And that's an open group. So anybody can join that. But take care. Don't spill your guts out on, the, on it because it's a public group and anybody can pick it up. Okay. Um, the other group is the Batch Flower School group, which is a closed group. It's a membership group. So when you sign up and buy the course, you'll get a free, um, a free time, three, four week free while to be supported while you go through the, the, the course itself. Okay. And then after that, there is a very low membership fee. I'm on tap. I'm up there. I'm enthusiastic. I never, ever not answer a question. Okay. And, you know, everybody who wants support gets support because it's an important thing they're doing. And we will, of course, put the links uh, on for the audience or for people listening to the replay or for the YouTube channel so they can contact you and get more information themselves. They can indeed. And it sounds to me like this is well worth spending time and energy on. Oh, hugely. Mm. It, it's, it's a way of healing your emotions. What is real? There is only one thing in life that's real, and that's how you feel. Oh, yeah. and this it's moment. your connection to your soul. And it's this healing. moment in time, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have a saying, actually, which I really like very much it says walk the path of your soul and you're happy and healthy yes deviate from the path of your soul you're unhappy and you become ill and that's that is one of batches of batches that are quotes isn't it it is it is yeah and it, it it is very true it is the other saying that i like a lot of his is true healing brings about a change of attitude Oh, no, a change of outlook, peace of mind, and, um, fl um, and purpose, I think, purpose and meaning or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But it's a change of attitude. True, true healing is going to change your outlook on life. And attitude is absolutely everything. It is, isn't it? It really is. Well, this has been an amazing show today. And even though I felt out of my comfort zone, I have done this show with you and I'm so glad that I did because the knowledge you've brought into awareness today is phenomenal. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for the opportunity. It's been my absolute pleasure. And I'm sure that so many people are going to get benefit from, from this episode. Thank you. I hope they will. And even if somebody just picks up a bottle of Rescue Remedy and it makes today easier, that's another day that's easier, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So from you, me, I am saying goodbye to our audience. And from Rose, goodbye. Thank you so bye. much. Thank you.